Thousands of chemicals are used daily in our personal lives at home and at work. Most of us encounter chemicals at work on a daily basis. While many chemicals are relatively harmless when handled properly, many are dangerous substances by nature. With some chemicals, the simple act of pouring from one container to another can be hazardous. All chemicals can pose serious physical and or health hazards when transported, handled, or used improperly. Science is constantly developing new chemicals to be used in an ever-widening variety of different ways. Without accurate, adequate knowledge about these chemicals, their hazards, and appropriate precautionary measures, employees are at great risk of harmful and even fatal accidents. OSHA recognizes the dangers of chemicals when used improperly and or when employees don't realize the dangers due to their lack of knowledge. Because of this, OSHA created the Hazard Communication Standard 29 CFR 1910.1200 or HCS to eliminate potential dangers by ensuring employees have the information necessary to protect themselves and their co-workers while working with and around chemicals. This chemical information is conveyed to employees via labels, signs, and safety data sheets. The SDS is a standardized 16-section detailed information bulletin prepared by the manufacturer or importer of a chemical that describes the chemical. Manufacturers and importers of chemicals must obtain or develop an SDS for each hazardous chemical they produce or import and must provide the SDS automatically at the time of the initial shipment of a hazardous chemical to a downstream distributor or user. Distributors must also ensure that downstream employers or companies are similarly provided an SDS. Whenever new or significant information regarding a chemical's hazard potential is realized, manufacturers and importers must update their SDSs. They are required to update the SDS within three months of learning any new information. Appendix D of the HCS explains the information to be included on the SDS and also the format required. All chemical manufacturers and distributors must use the same format. This format is the same as the American National Standards Institute standard on safety data sheets, which is familiar to many U.S. employers. This uniform approach to SDSs improves its effectiveness, makes it easier for your employer to comply with the regulation, and provides a safer workplace for employees. Employers must maintain copies of the SDSs for each hazardous chemical and must ensure they are readily accessible during each work shift to employees in the work area. Electronic microfiche and other alternatives to paper copies are permitted as long as no barriers to immediate access for employees in each work area are created by such options. Employers should prepare a list of all hazardous chemicals in the workplace and check it against the collected SDSs. If there are hazardous chemicals used for which no SDS has been received, the employer must contact the supplier manufacturer or importer to obtain the missing SDS. The SDS contains 16 sections. Each section must be in the order listed with the minimum required information as stated. If no relevant information is found for any given subheading, the SDS must clearly indicate no applicable information is available. Sections 12 through 15 fall outside of OSHA's jurisdiction and therefore are not mandatory regarding OSHA. They are part of the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals and will often be included on the SDS. For this reason, they are included in this training program. Here are the 16 different sections of the SDS as required by OSHA. Section 1, Identification, includes product identifier used on label, other means of identification, recommended use of the chemical and restrictions on use, name, address, and telephone number of the manufacturer, importer, or other responsible party, 
plus an emergency phone number. Section 2. Hazard Identification Identifies the various hazards of the chemical and required label elements, including the following information. Classification of the chemical, such as skin corrosion, irritation, serious eye damage, eye irritation. Signal word, which is used to alert employees of a potential hazard. Two words are used, danger for severe hazards and warning for less severe hazards. Hazard statements, describing the nature and degree of the hazard. Symbols, which may be graphical in nature or the name of the symbol, for example, flame, skull and crossbones. And precautionary statements that recommend measures to be taken to minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from exposure or improper storage or handling. Section 3. Composition Information on Ingredients As the heading implies, this section provides information on the composition of the chemical. For substances, the SDS will list chemical name, common name and synonyms, CAS number and other unique identifiers, impurities and stabilizing additives, which are themselves classified and which contribute to the classification of the substance. For mixtures, the SDS should state the chemical name and concentration or concentration ranges of all ingredients, which are classified as health hazards in accordance with paragraph D of the HCS. And for all chemicals where trade secret is claimed, a statement that the specific chemical identity and or the percentage of composition has been withheld because a trade secret is required. Section 4. First Aid Measures Includes a description of necessary measures subdivided according to the different routes of exposure, that is, inhalation, skin and eye contact, and ingestion the most important symptoms and effects, both acute and delayed, and an indication of immediate medical attention and special treatment needed. Section 5. Firefighting Measures List appropriate and inappropriate extinguishing techniques and equipment for the chemical, specific hazards arising from the chemical. An example would be the nature of any hazardous combustion products, and any and all special protective equipment and precautions for firefighters. Section 6. Accidental Release Measures List steps to take in the event of a spill or other type of accidental release. State personal precautions, protective equipment and emergency procedures, and methods and materials for containment and cleaning up. Section 7. Handling and Storage Describe precautions for safe handling and the conditions for safe storage, including any incompatibilities. Section 8. Exposure controls, personal protection. Pertains to protection methods. Include the OSHA Permissible Exposure Limit, or PEL, Threshold Limit Values, or TLVs, and any other exposure limit used or recommended by the chemical manufacturer, importer, or employer preparing the safety data sheet, appropriate engineering controls, and individual protection measures, such as recommended personal protective equipment is also included. Section 9. Physical and Chemical Properties lists the chemical's different characteristics, such as appearance, odor, flashpoint, pH level, vapor density, evaporation rate, and viscosity. Section 10. Stability and Reactivity. State the following. Reactivity. Chemical stability. Possibility of hazardous reactions. Conditions to avoid, such as static discharge, shock, or vibration. Incompatible materials and hazardous decomposition products. Section 11. Toxicological Information Description of the various health effects and the available data used to identify those effects, including information on the likely routes of exposure, such as inhalation, ingestion, skin and eye contact, the symptoms related to the physical, chemical, and toxicological characteristics, 
delayed and immediate effects, and also chronic effects from short and long-term exposure. Numerical measures of toxicity, such as acute toxicity estimates if known. Section 12. Ecological Information Although this is a non-mandatory section as it pertains to OSHA, it will be included on the SDS. This section includes information on the chemical effects on the ecology. Section 13. Disposal Considerations Another non-mandatory section, it contains a description of waste residues and information on their safe handling and methods of disposal, including the disposal of any contaminated packaging. Section 14. Transportation Information Another non-mandatory section includes such information as the UN number, UN proper shipping name, transport hazard class, and other information. Section 15. Regulatory Information The final non-mandatory section provides information on safety, health, and environmental regulations specific for the product in question. Section 16. Other information, including date of preparation or last revision. Section 16 is the last section. It will contain any additional information not already listed, as well as the date of preparation of the SDS or the last change to it. SDSs are vital to your safety and well-being. Knowing where they are located and understanding the information they contain could save your life or that of a coworker. If you have any questions concerning SDS, do not hesitate to contact your employer.